Most founders are still following the outdated playbook. Have an idea, fall in love with that idea, build it for months, finally launch it, and then you discover that no one really wants it. But what if we could flip that completely? Well, in our AI powered world, we can now validate startup ideas in just 24 hours instead of wasting 12 months building something that nobody wants. I've personally wasted millions on bad business ideas before I developed a good system. So in this video, I wanna share my five step AI validation framework that's gonna save us time, money, and a whole heap of heartbreak. Make sure you stick around to the end of today's video because I'm going to show you exactly how to interpret validation results to make the go and no go decision with confidence. Now if you're new here do hit that subscribe button and also check out my newsletter where we deep dive into how to actually build out AI businesses and learn how to master AI before it masters you. So with that being said let's jump into our first step of our five step process. Okay so the first step in our AI validation framework is really problem verification. The hard truth is that 90% of businesses fail because founders build products that no one actually wants. So before we write a single line of code, we need to confirm that the problem we're solving for is real. And here's how we can use AI to do this effectively and quickly. First, we're gonna use tools like Perplexity AI to search for people actively complaining about the problem that we want to solve. We've got an idea and we're looking for raw, unfiltered pain points. Next, we can use tools like Gumloop and collect things like Reddit threads, forum posts, and review sites where our potential customers hang out. We can then feed all of this data back into ChatGPT with a prompt that says, analyze these conversations and identify patterns of user pain points related to our problem area. Now, just as a quick example here, let's say we wanted to explore an idea for a new project management tool in a niche like academic researchers. So what we do is I would use this exact approach. I'd go into perplexity and look for dozens of threads on academic forums where researchers complained about existing tools. The AI analysis will then reveal some of the biggest pain points here and they might actually not be what we're expecting. It could be something about integrating with citation systems or something like that rather than project management. And if the AI can't find people generally struggling with the problem, then that's our first red flag. No real pain equals a dead idea. And this step alone can save us months of wasted effort. So now we've got that, it's on to step two. And step two is about market size analysis. If we've confirmed the pain is real, our next step is checking if enough people actually have that pain. There's no point solving a problem that only affects a really small group of people unless they're willing to pay pay a really big price. Here's how we leverage AI for market sizing. We can ask ChatGPT to help analyze Google Trends data, search volume patterns, and even estimate the total addressable market based on publicly available data. For example, if I input search volume data for terms related to AI meeting notes into Claude or ChatGPT, and it creates a detailed spreadsheet showing that the market's grown over 300% year on year, that's a really strong signal of a growing need. We can also use AI to segment potential users, creating detailed buyer percentage Personas based on who's most vocal about the problems on social media. We can grab those social media insights from tools like Gumloop, where they've got an actual Reddit monitoring tool where you can look at certain subreddits and analyze some of the commonalities. And what we're looking for here is a market that's either large enough or growing fast enough to support a business. If the AI analysis shows that market is too small or shrinking, then that's our signal to kill the idea before we put too much time into it. Now, this step probably takes just a few hours, but it can prevent years of struggling in a tiny market where even if there's a problem, it's not big enough to support our business. The other thing I might do here is jump into free SEO tools like SpyFu, for example, and look for any search terms around the product that we might be building and look at just how much volume there is in terms of people searching for that. So if it's something like, how can I link up my citation into my project management research tool, then we know there's probably a big need for it if there's like 100,000 people searching for that a month. If it's something much more niche, then it's less likely to be something we want to put our time into. Okay, now we know there's pain and an actual market out there, it's time to jump into step three, which is looking at the competitors in that market. For ideas that make it this far, we need to understand that competitive landscape. Many founders either ignore competitors or they get scared off unnecessarily and then don't do what they should do. And here's our AI powered approach. First, we identify our top five competitors and feed their websites, pricing pages, and customer reviews into ChatGPT or Claude. We ask our AI to create a comprehensive competitive and analysis, identifying things like the core features and capabilities of their products, their pricing strategies, their target audiences, any common complaints in reviews like G2 or on Reddit, and any gaps in their offerings. As a little bonus point here, we can also build out a custom tool that looks through their Facebook or Meta ads library and see what's hitting home for that particular competitor. What we're really looking for here is a clear opening, something that customers want that isn't being well delivered by the competition. In a recent test of sales email automation ideas, 
years, I fed competitor data to Claude and it discovered that there were over 40 different companies in the space, but none of which were focusing on personalization for enterprise sales team, a gap that I could potentially fill. Now, if the AI can't identify a clear competitive advantage or the space seems so oversaturated with well-funded players, then that's our signal to reconsider. If there's no clear advantage for us, then again, it's a dead idea. Okay, so now we're moving more towards our actual minimal viable product. And step four is how to design a zero cost MVP. This is where our approach really differs from the traditional startup method. Instead of building a full product before validation, we're gonna create what I like to think of as a little bit of a mock-up or a vibe code to test our AI. And here's how it works. Firstly, we use ChatGPT or Midjourney to design a landing page that looks completely real. We can also use tools like Vercel's V0 or Lovable or Bolt that can mock up a website in a really short space of time. We include AI generated mockups of our product, clear messaging about the value proposition and a get started or a join waitlist button that connects up to an email service like ConvertKit so that we can actually start capturing interested people. The other thing we can do here is around our messaging before we start writing any code at all. One of the big problems with websites, however beautiful they might look, is that often the actual value of a product isn't made clear to the potential buyer. And a great way to solve for this is just to put in something like who our buyer is into ChatGPT and then get it to write our messaging for us. If you want a slightly more automated approach, we can also look at tools like Octave, where you can put in things like your buyer persona, information about your product or any competitive websites, and then it will do all of this for you to make it as clear as possible for people to understand what you do and therefore more likely to actually sign up and buy your product. Now, once we've got our vibe coded MVP landing page, we want to run a small batch of ads, maybe about 50 to $100, targeting the exact customer profile that we identified in steps one and two. Then we measure how many people actually click the getting started button, what percentage entered their email, and this gives us quantifiable data on real purchase intent before we build anything. Now, I recently tested a language learning app idea this way, and the landing page took me literally 30 minutes to create with some AI assistance, and then I spent just 100 bucks on targeted ads. The result, only around 1% of visitors signed up, significantly below my personal five to 10 threshold for proceeding. This saves me months of development time and cost on a weak idea. And if people aren't clicking that get started button, then we have our answer. No buyers equals dead idea. And it only costs us a few hours and maybe a hundred dollars to really get that idea in front of as many people as possible. And that brings us to step five. For ideas that survive the first four steps, we now want to talk directly with potential customers from those wait lists. But cold outreach and customer interviews are skills in themselves. And this is where AI becomes our secret weapon. Here's how we can use AI to supercharge this step. We can use Claude or ChatGPT to draft personalized outreach messages based on the specific profiles that we're targeting. AI can generate dozens of variations that feel authentic and compelling. Next, we create an interview script with questions specifically designed to reveal true buyer intent, not just polite interest. And after conducting maybe five to 10 interviews, we can then feed our transcripts back into the AI for analysis, asking it to identify patterns and flag up statements that indicate genuine enthusiasm versus mere politeness. Now, if I'm testing out a B2B software idea, I might run an AI analysis of interview transcripts that might reveal some really interesting things. And I did this last year. For example, lots of people loved a new concept that I was putting out there, but none were willing to commit to a concrete next step. And this really saved us from pursuing that idea, which had just lukewarm reception. What we're looking for is genuine enthusiasm. People who are not just interested, but who are really excited about what we're building. No enthusiasm, no buyers equals dead idea. So there we have it. That's our five step AI validation framework that can help us determine if a startup is actually worth pursuing in just 24 hours. The beauty of this system isn't just that it's faster, it's that it completely changes how we approach building a startup. It's much more data driven because the AI will do the heavy lifting when we might not have the time to do that ourselves. And instead of falling in love with our own ideas and then trying to find those customers, we're actually letting real market data guide our decisions from day one in real time. Remember, the goal isn't to validate every single idea, it's just to kill the bad ideas quickly so that we can focus our time and resources on the ones with genuine potential. Now, I hope you found this video really fun to watch. I've got some other ones I'll put up over here that help you dive into other ways that AI can help you build a company. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing and I'll catch you again in the next one. See ya.